now, Lord, and I pray that you'll continue to be with us. I pray you'll be with us at this point in this time. Lord, give us hearts that we may sing praises to you. Lord, open our hearts, open our eyes, our ears to your word, and help us, Lord, to where we can together as, as, as believers as we come together, that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, if there's anyone here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that you'll open their hearts, their ears, and their eyes, and I pray, Father, that they'll come to know you today because of your power and your might. And so, Lord, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, and just ask that you be with us, watch over us, and help us. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's please be seated. In the way of... Uh, Announcements, just a few things, um, I guess just a couple of things. Um, tomorrow, school resumes here in St. Tammany Parish, so uh, yay for some and not for others. But, so, uh, so it resumes tomorrow, so be careful with the school zones. I know you're used to not having school zones this past week, but be careful now. So for them, watch out for the children and the kids and all and everyone else as well. Um, this coming Wednesday, we will not have the Wednesday night Bible study, so be aware of that uh, for those who come on Wednesday night, so we'll resume that the following Wednesday. Uh, we have collected a total of $255 for Andy Armstrong uh, for the work, mission work being done in the, um, in the U.S., so be, be aware of that. Uh, in the back, there are a few cards. Uh, things on it and, and blanks in the middle and on the back. If you would like to have uh, one or any of those cards that's on there, you can take them home and maybe use them later, maybe to use as a, I don't know, setting a sympathy card or, uh, or maybe even a, a card. It's a, it's a regular greeting card with nothing in the middle or nothing on the back. Um, so there are a few of them there. So if you'd like to have those or one or two or all of them, uh, and the sign there says, take them home. It's yours. Also in the back, there's two more containers of Boost for those of you who drink Boost. So there's in the back, you know, take them home as well, so that way they won't be sitting around here. So if you use that or know somebody that can, feel free to do that as well. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. Any other things that are going on in Slidell that we need to be aware of, of anything else taking place this coming week? I don't know anything else. Before we sing our next hymn, um, somebody wants to sing a special a cappella. Uh, and so that person will come at this time and sing a cappella. So I'll do the best I can. It's called Jesus Paid It All. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in thine, thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I Sin had left the crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now in thee I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt 
the heart of stone, cause Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For nothing good have I, whereby that grace did claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's land. Cause Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. For my sins had left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat, cause Jesus paid it all, all to him I own. For my sins had felt the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Thank you, Clarence. In case you're wondering, that's the cost of here. Clarence Poe, and thank you. Thank you for that testimony and for the song as well. That, that truly touched my heart, and now I think everybody's heart here as well. Appreciate it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, let us continue as we sing then hymn number 261, Wonderful Words of Life. <clears throat> Okay. 
She has a, um, a nurse that comes to see her, and she's having um, struggles right now because of some things that her son is going through because he's in the military and some things are taking place. So, so we need to pray for that family. Sure. Bobby, how is mom doing? She's doing okay, um, but she still suffers some of the depression. Just, okay. It's just the seasons and everything. Is just okay. Really yeah. Yeah. Okay, and I was a shoulder. Okay. She's, she's doing good. She's, okay. uh, she's able to use it. She doesn't, uh, she can't lift her arm real high, you know. Sure. As far as normal okay. uh, usage, she's, she's at least she's able to use it. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Within our country as well. Uh, be in prayer for Mr. Billy and, and uh, also for Mr. Billy's uh, daughter in law's brother, Junior. Junior has been placed on hospice. And so now it's just a matter of time. Is that right, Mr. Billy? So just pray for Junior, for, for Debbie, his, his daughter in law, and the family, and for him. And when do you, when, and what about you with your, with that little part right there? Tomorrow, okay. 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 Now pray for Mr. Billy because he's got ongoing um, uh, skin uh, skin cancers that they're dealing with, either on the arm right there. You already have one on the arm. Uh, and also on, on his face and different other places, his ear, and I mean, he had multiple places. So just, just pray for him and for what he's dealing with as far as, far as with the skin cancer that he's dealing with. And, uh, and, and, and as he makes a joke of it, you know, um, cremate him a little bit at a time. Is that right? <laughs> uh, even though he jokes about it, it is a very painful ordeal that you go through. So just pray for him and what he deals with as well. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever. Yeah, Debbie, yeah. Um, we got a call this morning. Um, Johnny's mother did that then rushed Christina back to the hospital. Oh, okay. She had been transferred last week to a host to a rehab hospital in Baton Rouge. Okay. And they were hoping, you know, to move things along. Uh, I think late last night she started having trouble breathing. Oh wow! So she's back in the hospital. Okay, and she's in Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge. Yes. Okay, so yeah, so pray, pray for Christina. We got her on our prayer list right there, and one of them. So pray for Christina and what she's dealing with. We sure will. Other prayer requests, concerns. 
Miss Miss Anna May. <clears throat> Other prayer requests. Pray for the many, 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 many people who are dealing with allergies. A lot of people. Everything is blooming. Everything is pollinating, or however you want to call it. Um, Mr. Billy, bees are happy, but people are not happy. Uh, because everybody's suffering with allergies or congestion or whatever the case may be because of the high pollen count. And, and as Johnny Garrett said, you wash your car, and the next hour you got pollen all over it. I mean, it, it, it's almost like it doesn't do any good to wash your car because you wash your car, depending upon the color, you see all the green or yellow. And so I'm just like, gee, why did I wash my vehicle? Look at it. So pray for the many people that are dealing with allergies and allergy-related others. Uh, some are serious, or some uh, are worse than others, and but everybody suffers with it. This man is several. Wait, wait, where are they going? Are they going somewhere? The only place I ever go, Gatlinburg. There are other cities in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, would you say the same thing if, if we were going to Disney World every year? I don't like Disney World. <laughs> so where would you go every year? I wouldn't go to the same place every year. <laughs> Even if you like it? Even if you go there more than every year. You go there four or five times every year. No, I'll go twice a year. But you know, the places, you can get pictures of all the places to show. We see the same pictures all the time. And there's other hey, rocks Debbie, and trails. Hey, Debbie, don't show her no more pictures. <laughs> don't show her no more pictures. She doesn't see enough for pictures. What's that? That's right, I know it's going to be wet this week. See, though, you need to go to a different city. One of the different mountain trails. But well, it's going to be wet there, too. Well, they are. They're going to Yel uh, Yellowstone soon. Is that the place you've never been? Never been. Okay, that's, that's, that's a step in the right direction. So, uh, so we're okay then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Traveling mercy for Frank and Debbie as they travel to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Again. I don't know why. 
Do you have a problem with that, Debbie? Uh, okay. I don't either. <laughs> I'm not okay. yeah. But you're right. You're right. There are other cities. You're right. Other states. Let's, you don't have to go to another state. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of cities in the mountains in Gatlinburg or in Tennessee. Just, you should go to a few of them and compare them. Well, we have. We've gone to Lookout Mountain. <laughs> we've gone to Chattanooga. We have. Uh, so we, we've gone there. So yeah, we've gone to others, right? Yeah. We've gone, okay, we've gone to Alabama. We've gone to other places there, too. So yeah, we do. But traveling mercies as we travel. Yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> other, other prayer requests. I'm sure other people will be traveling as well, so traveling mercies for others who will be traveling. <clears throat> Even if it's just back and forth to work or in and around the city here as far as traveling uh, in different destinations, so pray for that. Uh, so, because we have, we do have different people that travel, you know, going back and forth to work from Mississippi all the way to here, or Mississippi all the way to New Orleans. So, traveling mercy for the many people there. Pray for those who are not with us this morning for whatever reason. We do have a few that are out, so pray for them and, and, and pray for God's grace. Pray for what's going on over in Israel, and the war there, and also what's take, still taking place between Russia and Ukraine and. Other places where there is turmoil, where there are where scrimmages, where there are where, where there is uh, struggles and different things that are taking place. Pray for our young people today and for what they deal with, and our many, many, many senior adults as well, and what they deal with and what takes place in their lives also. Pray for each other, remember each other in prayer also. So let's go along in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, as we come now, Lord, we lift up all these prayers, all the concerns, the many, many things that have been voiced, and the many unspoken prayers as well. We lift them all up before you, and we pray for your will to be done in everything. We pray, Lord, for those who are dealing with different health issues and health problems, some here, some at home, some in hospitals, we lift them up and we pray for the many people who are suffering and going through different things because of health. We pray for the many people that are struggling and going through difficulties, whatever may be going on, besides the health issues that they're dealing with, and we lift them up before you. We pray for the many people struggling in the workplaces, uh, the many families, the many things that are taking place. Uh, we, we lift up our country, our leaders, and the many things that are going on within our country and what we see that is so terribly wrong and we pray that you'll help guide direct. Traveling mercies not only for me and my wife but also for others that will be traveling and are traveling on the road. Watch over them, help them, and be with them, Lord. We, we do pray for the, for the many people, Father, where decisions need to be made or, or things need to be attended to. And we pray you give them that as far as helping them with decisions and many other things as well. When death has come, we pray for grace, mercy, and comfort for those who are destroyed and for those who have lost a loved one. And as always, Lord, we pray for the many, many people who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. And we lift up the many people in need of Jesus Christ in their hearts and in their lives. And so we pray for them as well. And Lord, just thank you. Thank you so much for all that you have done and are doing in all of our lives. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let so us stand then as we sing our offertory hymn, hymn number 188, The Great Physician. <clears throat>
Father God, as we come at this time, Lord, we want again thank you for your many, many blessings. Thanks for seeing to our needs. Thanks for being with us, for helping us, and, and Lord, for guiding us each and every day. And so, Lord, we come at this time and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. And we ask, Lord, that you will see to it that all is collected, that it's used as the furtherance of your kingdom for the spreading of the gospel and to be used any way that you see fit. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus. Amen. to say, 
hey, Lord, help me, guide me, direct me. And the only way we can do that is by His Word and by His power as well. So look, first of all, notice in verses 13 through 24, the need for understanding. Understanding the things that have taken place here. The need for understanding. These, these two disciples, as well as the others, they needed to understand a little bit more concerning what all has taken place and what, what has happened as well. Notice as they're walking, he says, Now the same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Now they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. Now as they talk and discuss these things to each other, this is what I laugh at as well. Jesus himself came up and he walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. And then he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? Well, they stood still with their face cast down, downcasted. And then one of them, Clovis, asked, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and did not know the things that had happened that are in these days? <laughs> this is what I chuckled at as well. He says, What things? What are you talking about? Like he did not know. He knew everything. And yet he said, What things? And he says about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and the rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. They crucified him, but, he, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of the women, they amazed us. I'm not sure if that's the word to you, but that's what it's thrown down here. They amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. And they came back and they told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of the companions, we know the companions are Peter and, Jeff, Peter and John, went and went to the tomb and found just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Now this is an amazing thing again as, as we see here. The two disciples here as they have just conversed with the other disciples in the room behind locked doors now because they're still frightened of the Pharisees and the religious leaders. And so they leave the other disciples and they're heading back home to Emmaus about seven miles away. As they are walking, put, you, put yourself in their place. They're heavy hearted. They are downcasted. They are beside themselves about the death, the burial, and supposedly resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the women said, the angel said to them that this Jesus is not here. He has risen from the dead. They amazed us that they would even think that for even a moment uh, as far as in heart. So they didn't believe the words of the woman, nor did they believe the evidence that was presented to them. The empty tomb. No body. What happened to the body? It's evident. They didn't take the body. The religious leaders didn't take the body. The Roman soldiers didn't take the body. But yet, they still, their hearts were hardened by the fact of their grief and the fact that their hopes were shattered because of the death of Jesus Christ and what took place. So then, all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, Jesus appears unto them. Now this is not unusual on that stretch. A lot of people just appear, as many people would walk. Just like maybe you walk along and all of a sudden you see somebody you know. Well, this is nobody they know because they, got, they were not able to recognize Jesus because he enabled them not to recognize him because he wanted them to have more understanding because they needed to understand. Because if, he, if they would have recognized Jesus, then he wouldn't have even tried to, he would not, I don't know how far he would have got to explain to them concerning what the scriptures, what God's word had said concerning the Messiah. So they were not able to recognize him uh, at this point and at this time as well because again, they needed a little more understanding. You know, um, concerning the Christ and, and what and what does it take place? You know, there are times even in our lives, you yourself 
You may read many things from the Word of God and not understand them completely. And then sometimes you go back and you may read that verse again or that passage again and all of a sudden it's like the light came on. And you get to understanding and God is giving you just a little bit more understanding. And then look, it's an amazing thing. Then you go back and you read that same passage maybe a month or two later. And you know what? God gives you even a little bit more understanding of it. It's like it never goes sour. That means there's always something new that God's revealing in his word. And I can testify to that concerning this. And many times I've preached and many times I've studied. It's like different things that God reveals and he enlightens and he shows us how we need and need more understanding into his word. You know, he gave understanding to many, many people. Look at the understanding he gave to Abraham, to Daniel, to Job, to Joshua, to Moses. Oh, and the list goes on and on. And then Nicodemus of all people. He gave even that. He came to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus came to him one night and says, we know you're from God. And he gets, even gave Nicodemus understand. Nicodemus, he says, you need to be born again. Huh? What do you mean I need to be born again? Not of flesh and blood, but of the spirit and of the water. You need to be born from above. So he gave that understanding to Nicodemus. And you know what happened in the life of Nicodemus? He pondered that which Jesus gave him. And then later, he realized that that Jesus that he talked to was indeed the Messiah. And he and, that, and Joseph of Arimathea, they took down the body of Jesus and buried him. But he came, I believe, he came to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior through the understanding of a little bit more that Jesus gave him that night as they spoke. And as Jesus told him, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. And this, I know Nicodemus pondered, and the understanding, and I think as he journeyed, and as he, and as he heard the, some more words of Jesus as he preached to the people and he saw the miracles, that which Jesus told him gave him even more understanding. You see, every now and then we need more understanding into the Word of God. And the only way we can get that is by reading the Word of God and allowing God to reveal what He wants us to know. But you know, also, He did not give them a more, little bit more understanding. But notice, what was He doing? He was walking with them. He was talking with them. Uh, again, uh, he was talking with them while they were, where? Where were they in their lives? They were in their grief. They were in sorrow. Many, sometimes we too, we are in sorrow, we are in grief. And we think that we are walking alone, but we are not. The Lord is ever present with us. He is there, watching and, and talking with us. And notice, what does Jesus do? He's listening to them patiently. He's listening to what they are saying concerning it. And again, I just laugh at him. He says, and he says, are you, he says, what things? He asked them, what things are you talking about? What things, what do you mean? You know, concerning it, even though he knew it, they had to voice. And they voiced it to the Lord, unknowing to them. Uh, again, there are many times where Jesus will walk with us. And there are many times where we won't even realize he is the one that is helping us to walk. He is the one that is helping us as we journey through our grief, our disappointments, or whatever may be going on with us. And he listens to us. Why does he listen? Why, does, why is he doing that? Because he knows what we're going through. He knows our sorrows, our hurts, our disappointments. He knows what, we, what we're dealing with. And it says that in the Word of God. In Hebrews chapter 4, here, it relates, and it so says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is, not, who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are yet without sin. So let us approach the throne of grace, 
with confidence so that we what? May receive mercy and find grace to do what? To help us in our times of need. You see, he's, he does care about us. And he's there and he listens to us when we speak to him. He listens, he hears us, and he also is sympathizing with us because he understands he himself. And so as we, as we journey and as we walk in this life on this earth, we have someone that we can talk to. And just as these two men, unknowing to them, were speaking to Jesus, we knowingly speak to Jesus. And he hears us. And he gives us even more understanding of what is needed. Then the second thing we see, not only does he give them a little bit more understanding, but notice he reveals to them the source of this understanding that is needed in the lives of every person, but especially believers. The source of it. Notice, notice as they speak to him and they tell him everything and he knows their hearts. Notice what takes place in verse 25 and following. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things then enter his glory? And so what happens? And notice, he says, And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Now this is amazing here. The two, the two disciples here, the two believers, they're confused and unbelief has clearly hindered their understanding to the reality of what they have just discovered that morning. It's hindered them because of unbelief. They have seen with their own eyes, or many of them have seen with their eyes, the empty tomb. They have been told <clears throat> by the women what the angels have said. And many times Jesus himself told them, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to die, but on the third day I'm going to rise again. He told them over and over again. And yet, because of unbelief, and it blocked their understanding. So, having mildly rebuked them, notice he says, how foolish you are. He mildly rebuked them for their unbelief. What does Jesus do? He goes through the Holy Scriptures with them and reveals to them concerning what and how come the, the, the Messiah had to suffer. And he had to die, and he was raised on the third day. You see, he goes through the scriptures, just as it says in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 10 and following. Yet it is the Lord's will to crush him, to cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and, pr and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. After suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servants will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and it will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressions. So here we see this here. But if you notice, concerning here what, again, Jesus is doing, see, they didn't understand all that was going on and all that was taking place. They didn't understand that Jesus himself was not just an earthly Messiah, but that he was an eternal Messiah. He was a Messiah that would be permanent forever and ever and ever. And that this Messiah had to do what he did in order to redeem mankind from their sins. There was no other option, none available whatsoever. And, and notice and here, as, as, we, as we so see, they, they, all of them, they were looking for an earthly Messiah. You notice, what did, what did they say concerning, what, what, did, what did they hope for? He was a prophet, a powerful man indeed and all, and we had hoped, as he said, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. You see, what they wanted redemption from, 
was from the Roman government. Instead, what God wanted to redeem them from was their sins and redeem them from their empty way of life and give them eternal life and the forgiveness of sins. And the only way that that could be done was through the redeemed blood of the Lamb of God, which was the Son of God, which was the Messiah. So that's why. And they didn't fully understand all that. I, again, what we need to understand here as well, here Jesus here is relating to them from Holy Scripture. And notice it says, he began with Moses and the prophet. That doesn't mean he began with the life of Moses. That means, I believe, he began all the way in the beginning, in Genesis. And I think he began in Genesis 3, chapter 15, I mean chapter 3, verse 15, as when he told there, Adam and Eve, he says, that I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will crush your heel and you will, and you will strike his heel. Again, the promise that God was saying here was that he will send a deliverer to deliver mankind. And Jesus was indeed that deliverer. And then he related to them. I mean, this must have been an awesome Bible study that he so related to them as he went from, the, I think, the beginning in Genesis, he spoke about what Prophet Isaiah said, what Jeremiah said, what Malachi said, what, many, what Daniel had said, and so, so forth and everything else. He's relating everything. And he's telling them from Holy Scripture, hey, this is why, and this is what took place, the reason for it. He's giving them the source of it. Do not discount the inerrancy and the integrity of the Word of God. It is without fault. All of it, every part of it, from cover to cover, points to the Christ, points to the Messiah and the redemption of mankind and the plan of God. This plan of God was not devised after Adam and Eve had sinned. This plan was devised even before Adam and Eve had sinned and even before the world was even created. Before anything even happened. God had already had this plan in effect. In effect. This is how much God loved. And, and so we see this here. See, all of it points to what? Eternal life. The forgiveness. The redemption of us. That only comes by knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, by repenting of sin and turning to Him. See, God's plan for understanding. Where does it come? See, we have to go to the source. And the source, and what we have, is the Word of God. This is our source. And it's without fault. There's no contradiction. Many people think there's a contradiction in the Word of God. No, there's not. There's not. You know, sadly, the world today, they don't, many, many people, they don't put much stock in the Word of God. To some people, it's just a good book. Or it's just some good words written down. But it's more than that. It is the source in which we, God reveals to us of what He had done to redeem us from our empty way of life and how He redeemed us from our sin. And how indeed we will have eternal life and what will take place afterwards. See, it gives us the before, the, it gives us the past, the present, and the future. Of everything, of everything. It is, it is the awesomeness of God. And it's true to form. And, and no one yet has ever found it to be with, without the fact of, hey, I found some errors in this, and I found some errors here and there. There are no errors. There are none. It is, this is the inherent word of God. It is the source in which we need to continue to look into. And so he reveals to them, Oh, how slow of heart you were to believe, not to believe all that was spoken of by the prophets. Christ had to suffer. You know, I'm glad he had to suffer. I'm not glad he had to suffer, but I'm glad he did suffer because if he wouldn't have, we wouldn't have any hope. 
Someone had to suffer for our sins. We couldn't do it. We were suffering through our sins, even though sometimes we don't even realize we're suffering consequences of it. But some people think they're okay. But God, in His mercy and His grace, He sent His Son to die on the cross and to suffer for us, to redeem us. That's why it says in God, that God is the love of the world that He gave. Gave his only begotten Son. And then the last thing we see in verse 20 through 35 is the response to this understanding now that Jesus gave to these two disciples. Notice what took place in their lives and in their hearts when Jesus was speaking to them through the scriptures. Notice what took place with them. It says, And as they approached the village which way they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going farther. Then they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is near evening. The, de the evening, the day is almost over. So he went and in and stayed with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then, after doing that, their eyes were open and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we did what? While he talked to us on the road, opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and told, and those with them and assembled together and said, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. That is, Jesus must have related to them that he had talked to Simon Peter after his resurrection, or he, he spoke to him. And then the two of them told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. <clears throat> this is amazing here. The revelation that God he has so revealed to these two men. As they approached the village, Jesus acted as though he was going further along. Uh, and we often, well, why did Jesus not just go in there with them? When it, you know, even when they got there, it, says, it, it even says in there, they approached the village, Jesus acted as he was going, but they urged him strongly. And I, I really believe, this is my opinion, I think that Jesus never pressed himself upon anybody. But you know, in many cases, what Jesus did was, he wanted people to invite them or invite him to come into their homes, or into his life, and into their hearts as well. Do that invitation as far as with everything. You know, it tells us, again, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. Whoever seeks will find. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. But also, you know, and it says, and as he instructed his twelve before he himself was crucified, he said, Whoever, whatever town or village you enter, search for the worthy person there, stay at the house until you leave. And as you enter the house, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let the peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not recognize you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet, and when you leave the when, when you leave the home or town, I tell you the truth, it's more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I am sending you out like sheaves among the wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. And so we see here that Jesus, through the awesomeness and in the inerrant word of God, he opens their minds and their hearts. To his words, as they said, were not our hearts burning within us when he did what? When he opened the scriptures to us. You see, this is what the word of God does. It changes hearts. It changes lives. It changes people. Look at the people that the word of God has changed. You, you've heard me talk about this in the past as well. The different people like, uh, like Nicodemus, like Zacchaeus. And so many others as well, like Paul, Lydia, and so many others. It has changed their lives. And 
so it also changed them. And so what did they do? They invited Jesus into their home. Why? Because they wanted to hear more about what he was speaking of when he talked, this, when he opened the scriptures to them. So they invited Jesus to come into their home so that they, too, could grow in grace and in truth and to learn that Jesus is, in fact, the Messiah. And what did they learn when Jesus came in? They went back to the disciples. And they, and they got up, he says, at once. They found the eleven. And what did they realize? It is true. It actually happened the way the women told us. Jesus had risen from the dead. They were not hallucinating. No one stole the body of Jesus. He had risen. It is true. We've seen him with our own eyes. We didn't hallucinate this. He told us even more things as well. And so we see this here. And so what is taking place here, Jesus opens their heart. And this is what needs to be done today. You see, people's hearts need to be changed. Their hearts need to be opened. And the only way it can be changed is through the Word of God. By God's power. By what God does. He opens the heart. Even Jesus said that. He said, it's not, it's not up here. It's within the heart. It's from the heart these things come out. It's from the heart you speak and you act, and you do. It's how your heart is. If your heart is right before the Lord and you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you will do what the Lord wants you to do and how he wants you to do it as well. Again, we see this here. Jesus and his word has changed many. Uh, concerning it, we read concerning over and over again about the ways in which God has changed the hearts of people, not just in his word, but notice the way God has changed the hearts of people today. Why do people do what they do? They're not doing that just so they can work their way to heaven. I know some people think they are, but they're not. They're doing this because of their relationship with the Lord. Because from the heart, God lives in their heart and in their life. And when God changes the heart, he changes everything about the person. His attitude, our attitude, thinking, his thinking, everything. You see, if the heart is not changed, nothing is changed. The person stays the same. But when the heart is changed, there's a burning inside that can only come from knowing Jesus Christ, by only knowing what he had done. And, be, and, and, and this belief comes from the heart as well, knowing Jesus Christ as well. Maybe today, I don't know, maybe today God's word has changed your heart. Maybe God has said to you, come unto me, come unto me. I want to have a relationship with you. Invite me into your home, into your heart, into your life. And see what changes will take place and what will happen as well. And he says, come. And he says, come as you are. Come as you are. Don't wait until you think you're good enough. Because you know why? We'll never be good enough. And we need to come unto him when he says, come unto me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest for your soul. This is what people need. They need a change of heart so they can have rest for their soul. You know, this morning we talked about the peace we talked about the joy that comes. And that only comes by knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. God is speaking to you today. You come. He is speaking to you. Let us know. Almighty God, as we come at this time, Lord, and at this hour, and if there's anyone whose heart you have spoken to, you have burned into them and have said unto them, Come unto me. I pray that now... They will take this opportunity, Lord, and they will come unto you, just as they are. And we're praying for them, if you are calling them to come. And we ask for your grace and for your mercy upon them. In the name of Jesus, amen. So if God has spoken to you today, 
and he's telling you come. You come as we sing hymn number 295, Near to the Heart of God.